All right, here we go with our video 7.2, ionic bonds and ionic compounds. So we've talked a little bit about ions and how an element, an atom of an element, can gain or lose an electron. And when it gains an electron, it's negative and it's an anion. If it loses an electron, it's positive and it's a cation. And these compounds composed of cations and anions are called ionic compounds. And they work because the cation and the anion have opposite charges, and then they are attracted by electrostatic forces. So, so here's how that works, right? If you have a sodium, right, and you have a chlorine, okay, and I draw the dot structure here, the chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons, and the sodium has one valence electron. Okay. Now, the sodium is very happy to give up this electron. The chlorine is very happy to take it. So the sodium gives this electron to the chlorine, which gives us a sodium plus and a chlorine minus, which is a chloride. So it's our positive ion, our negative ion, and then they stick to each other. Why? Because opposites attract. So the positively charged sodium ion is now going to be attracted to the negatively charged chloride ion. So a chemical formula shows the kinds and numbers of atoms in a molecule of a substance with the formula unit being the lowest whole number ratio of ions in an ionic compound. Now, when we talk about sodium chloride, for example, NaCl, it's not like there's only a single sodium and a single chloride ion. Okay, It's this actual crystalline structure of all these chlorides and all these sodium ions all stuck together based on the fact that the positives and negatives attract each other. Okay, so with sodium chloride, the lowest common denominator, the lowest whole number ratio is a one-to-one, -one, so it's written NaCl. Uh, magnesium chloride, however, it's MgCl2. And what that means is, since magnesium by itself it has two valence electrons and the chlorine one two three four five six seven All right the chlorine only has room for one but if there's a second chlorine one two three four five six seven this electron is given from the magnesium to this chlorine and this electron is given from the magnesium to this chlorine and we end up with two chloride ions so this is one magnesium and two chlorides MgCl2 okay there's an understood invisible one here we never write it because if it just is Mg it's obvious that it's Mg1 but there's two chloride ions so it's MgCl2 All right, so what are some properties of ionic compounds? These are some things we just have to kind of remember. Now, since they really like sticking to each other, they're going to form a solid at room temp, and they're called a crystalline solid. They look like crystals here. There's just a picture of a couple of crystals. Okay, And the ions are arranged in a repeating three-dimensional pattern, kind of like that picture on the previous page. Back, 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 back. Okay, it's like a nice 3D pattern of all these ions to make the molecule. They have high melting points. What happens is, since they like really sticking together so well, the, it takes a lot of energy to push those molecules apart, so they have a high melting point. The high melting point is the melting point, we'll write it as MP, and it's a very high temperature, T-E-M-P, melting point. 
And an interesting thing about them is for the most part, these ionic compounds are soluble in water. That means they dissolve in water, which you kind of know from the fact that if you take salt and put it in water, the salt all dissolves and you can't see it. But what happens is when it's dissolved in water or even melted, these ionic compounds will tend to conduct electricity. So pure water is not likely to conduct electricity, but as soon as you add some type of ionic compound like salt to it, it will. All right, that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, as always, if you need to go back, rewind, listen to it again if there was anything you didn't understand. See you in school.